Hello and welcome to this Quintus Tech Talk. My name is Jim Shipley and I'm the Business Development Manager for Quintus Technologies, working with hip and high pressure heat treatment. Today I'm going to be talking to Dirk Herzog, uh, Dr. Dirk Herzog from the Hamburg University of Technology, who's working with additive manufacturing of titanium alloys. So welcome to this Tech Talk, uh, Dirk. Could you introduce yourself, please? Hi, Jim. Yeah, thank you for the introduction and the invitation. Um, so I work for Hamburg University of Technology as substitute professor at the moment in the field of additive manufacturing. And at the same time, I work for Fraunhofer IAPT, which stands for uh, Institution for Additive Production Technologies. Okay, so, so what, are you, what are you working with? What are your main areas? So as you might uh, see from the name, of, obviously we are uh, focusing on additive manufacturing. On the university side, uh, our Institute of Laser and Systems Technologies is focusing on laser materials processing, uh, of which additive manufacturing is the main working area at the moment. And uh, also on the side of Fraunhofer IAPT, uh, we are looking at um, many different additive manufacturing processes actually the whole process chain and uh, especially on the areas of design processes, materials and the implementation of additive manufacturing into um, business cases. And, and, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about titanium alloys uh, or titanium 6-4 specifically. So can you tell us a little bit about the, the, the limitations within AM for for powder bed fusion especially, which is what you're working mainly with, I think. Um, what are the limitations and what are the areas where you have most concern in, the, in, in printing parts today? Yeah, especially if you're looking at serial production, that means the requirements on the parts are pretty high. Um, so there's definitely uh, many different challenges for these processes uh, nowadays. And uh, one of the main areas of concern is always the productivity uh, of the processes. So um, additive manufacturing is still considerably slow compared to um, other processes. So we're looking into this area specifically, but obviously there are other areas. The density of the parts needs to be maintained. The uh, material properties should be at least on the same level as with conventional processes. Uh, the surface quality of additive manufacturing usually is not on the same level, so we need to do some post-processing in the end. We do uh, see thermal stresses when it comes to um, additive manufacturing of titanium alloys especially. So these are all areas um, which are of concern and where we are looking uh, into finding solutions in, uh, through research and development nowadays. Okay, so, so where, where does HIP fit into the, to the, the value chain here then for your, your production process? So there are many different benefits you could uh, get out of um, hot isostatic pressing in the process chain. Um, obviously, most of the parts that are coming out of the additive manufacturing processes are not usable as um, they come out of the printing, um, but they do need some post-processing, as I already mentioned. And uh, this means you do need to do some stress relief treatment usually to get rid of the thermal induced stresses to a certain extent, take the part of the build platform. And then afterwards, um, you still need to do some heat treatment. And uh, here's where hot isostatic pressing can also fit in um, to give you an additional value in densifying parts and uh, maybe doing the heat treatment of the part at the same time, which is usually uh, used for uh, getting the material properties that you want from, from your specific alloy. Right, and, and, you, and you mentioned that it's a, quite a slow process. I mean, what have you been doing to try and uh, speed up this whole process? I mean, what, what, what parameters can you play with and what have you done? Okay, so uh, basically um, you are trying to find parameters that guarantee you the strengths of your part first, the integrity of your part. So basically you're trying to uh, become more or less fully dense parts. So that's the way you're trying to optimize regularly. Um, but this means you're quite limited in terms of the speed of the process. Uh, because you're first of all trying to find parameters which give you dense parts. 
So uh, there's few possibilities you can do. You could maybe increase the layer thickness, uh, but then you also lose a bit of the detail of the parts in the processes. Uh, we've been looking more into um, finding a new combination of processes. And in this case, using the hot isostatic pressing um, to take care of some remnant porosity we get out of the process if we print with higher speed. So it's actually a method where we say, if we use hot isostatic pressing, then we maybe uh, do not need the fully dense parts in the very beginning, but we can speed up our process and allow some remnant porosity, which will then be elim eliminated by the hot isostatic pressing afterwards. Right, and, I, and I know you've been looking at the kind of the sweet spot for for a dense parts compared with allowing some porosity. I mean, what what, what does uh, what what does the difference? What's the difference for those people that don't really understand the printing process fully? So, if you do laser powder bed fusion as the main additive manufacturing process for metals uh, nowadays, uh, as I mentioned, you try to find parameters which guarantee fully dense parts, and that means you try to find the right amount of energy you put into the material to, to uh, describe it in an easy way. So uh, your limitations are uh, if you put in too little energy, you get some porosity from unmolten areas, which is called lack of fusion porosity. And on the other hand, if you put in too much energy, you get gas pores in your parts. So this actually means you have quite a a uh, small uh, processing window uh, and not a lot of room uh, to increase your processing speed or uh, try to adjust your parameters to other requirements. Unless you're going to be doing hipping afterwards, of course, Unless which is what, doing which is what you've been looking at. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, this is what you've been looking at, right? So, I mean, um, so so what, what were you able to do? I mean, you uh, you, you printed some parts with, with porosity uh, in them and then you've hipped them right to to compare yes so the main idea is to uh, use the hip uh, in terms of uh, densifying parts that haven't been manufactured to full density beforehand this means we're allowing around uh, up to five percent of porosity in the printing process and we've done some work to identify um, the maximum speed we can go with in the process if we don't tackle the full density, but if we allow these 5% of porosity. Um, we found that, uh, especially for titanium 6.4, you will uh, be able to increase the printing speed by around 60 to 70% wow. and come up with um, parts that can still be hipped to almost full density afterwards. Right, that's a huge saving. So, I mean, what, what, what are you t talking about in terms of uh, saving in, in, in money, monetary terms? Okay, so one thing to consider is uh, we, we have been talking about the scan speed in the process. So uh, we cannot directly use these 60 or 70%, but we have to consider that there are other process steps inside the printing process, like depositing the next layer of powder and so on. But uh, our investigations have shown that we will save around 25% um, of the pr total printing time for parts. And uh, if, you're, if you want to translate in this into some uh, value in euros, you can look maybe at the machine costs for such a printer, which is around half a million to one million euros. So basically, if you speed up the process like this and you have a high utilization of your printer, then you can uh, directly save 25% of these uh, costs. Right, so you mean you can actually have less machines in a, in a production setup uh, print printing the same volume, basically? You could do this, obviously, yes. Yeah, okay. Or you could print more parts, of course, because you have the machines and you can print 25% more parts in the same time. Yes, you can oh. also get your parts out much faster. So if time is critical, you might also have uh, one big advantage out of this. Okay, excellent. So, I mean, um, from this process window now, and then the the the, the this high speed printing with like sixty seven percent higher speed laser speed, twenty five percent saving in terms of money or, or capacity. Um, what does this 
how does this equate into into real parts you know into real production parts have you done any trials yeah we have been uh, looking at uh, one part where we do have some experience with which is a fuel connector um used in the airbus a380 as an example uh and for this case um it was um transferred into a uh, integral design which means uh, you're saving a lot of costs already by um, by using additive manufacturing um, so the cost benefit already uh, by making this part out of additive manufacturing instead of using conventional manufacturing is around 50 percent uh, but the printing of this part is still very long so it's around uh, one day until you get uh, three pieces out of a machine roughly um, so if you look at this, uh, we would be able to save around uh, six hours of printing time just by this approach. Um, and usually, this is very important, especially in aerospace applications, you would go for the hot isostatic pressing uh, anyway to uh, safeguard your material properties in the end. Right. So it sounds like a win-win then. So really, really nice piece of work. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, cost savings, and also you get the good uh, metallurgy out of the part with use, using the high-pressure heat treatment, which is which is great. So uh, so thank you very much for your time today, Dirk. And and uh, b before we we leave each other now, I mean, what, do you have any any examples of what's going on at the moment in uh, at the university or in at Fraunhofer that you're that you're currently working on or areas that are, are of interest? For, for the viewers? Yes, so uh, we are very convinced uh, that this uh, process combination is of help for additive manufacturing. And uh, so we are looking at transferring this approach to many different materials at the moment. Uh, for example, uh, to Inconel, which is also used in aerospace technology uh, very widely. But we also think this can be a very interesting approach for aluminium, for example, uh, where we're currently working um, together with uh, Fraunhofer APT and some partners to uh, find parameters that uh, allow fast printing. Um, and then we can use the HIP process together with your uh, T6 heat treatment in the same machine that you have developed to even uh, speed up the process much more and to come up with a very good solution for this material as well. Yeah, it's, an, it's a really interesting area, I think. Uh, so, I mean, there are so many different alloys that can get benefits from this kind of thinking then, speeding up the process, saving money, and at the same time, uh, getting the right metallurgy out of the parts. So that's really excellent. Thank you very much for your time today. It's been uh, great having you uh, uh, in, in this discussion with me today. And. Um, for those of you out there watching this, I mean, there are many, many more uh, Tech Talks out there on our website. So go in and have a look what other, other Tech Talks are there. There are a number of different alloys we're looking at at the moment in, our, in these discussions. Thank you, Jim. It's been a pleasure to talk to you today. Okay, thank you.